move for the regular city council meeting to order. It is Monday, April 22nd, 2013, 7 p.m. Uh, if there's anyone present who may require special assistance to participate at this public meeting, please let us know and we'll try to assist you. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Petter. Here. Council Member Crum. Here. Council Member Cobb. Here. Council Member Johnson. Here. Council Member Clark. Here. Council Member Lefebvre. Here. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is to approve the agenda, please. I make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. I'll second it. Are there any questions or comments? Yeah. Motion and a second. Council Member Lefebvre. Aye. Council Member Clark. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Fouch. Aye. And Council Member Crown. Aye. Tonight's agenda has been approved. <clears throat> agenda item number four is approved the consent agenda. Uh, this is to approve the minutes of the April 8th, 2013 City Council meeting. Set date of Monday, May 6, 2013 for our next regular City Council meeting. Approved claims register and building permits were approved for Brian Klein and Justin Eilers. I'll make the motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Okay, but any questions or comments on the consent agenda? Motion and a second. Council Member uh, Levine. Aye. Uh, Clark. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Fouch. Aye. Ann Crump. Aye. Tonight's consent agenda has been approved. Agenda item number five was discussed and approved with Class C liquor and Sunday sales license for Docks Roadhouse. And everything is in order. We received everything back from the state. So. I make a motion to approve Class C liquor and Sunday sales license for Docks Roadhouse. I'll second that. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, Council Member Aye. Clark. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ann Crump. Aye. Agenda item number five, uh, liquor license for uh, Docks Roadhouse is approved. Uh, agenda item number six is discussed and approved proposals for updates to water plant. Um, there's probably going to be several questions on this. I'm going to have Scott come up and talk about it. I don't want to talk about the prices right now, but kind of let you know why the difference is, uh, where we're at on the prices and everything, so that uh, we can decide if we do want to approve as is or if we want to kind of rebuild the one that uh, doesn't include some of the technical aspects. Uh, you should have got a copy of each one of these. Um, this has been quite a process. Um, it's not real easy to do because it's all kind of Greek to me on these controls. So all I could do was have them come in and say, I want to update my controls. So both these companies are looking at it in a little bit different way of doing things, which is both good. And, but there's a little difference in the price. So um, Jetco Electric, I have I never dealt with them before. They have sales rep to stops regularly, and and this was through Iowa Pump. They brought them over, and basically, the way it looks to me, their bid is they're going to replace all those little control panels. They'll all be updated with PLC. You know, the whole panel will be changed to touch screen. So basically, I'll have the same operation I have now, only with updated controls. Um, I was having trouble finding anybody that wanted to even bid this. There's not a lot of companies that do this. And we work with um, Process Measurement out of Omaha, which is Bud DeGraff. I don't know, Mike's probably heard us talk about Bud before, and Randy, and some of them. He's been dealing with our controls in our wastewater and water for, what, maybe 30-some years. He probably knows that water plant better than I do. Um, so I contacted him. And, he works through Lakeland Engineering, so I asked him if they'd be interested in it. Oh yeah, we do that. So they came up with a, about five guys and <laughs> went through and looked at everything and started working on it. And um, the difference in the money is, if you get to looking at it, if I understand it right, and I know by talking to them is with um, Lakeland Engineering, they, we will be all hooked up to a laptop and through the internet and well I will be able to do my laptop at home anywhere my truck anywhere I can see what that plant's doing make adjustments um, to where the other one is just going to be basic um, that that's a, a pretty good the way it reads in there to me is and the way they explained it to me they'll have 
that, that will keep all kinds of memory and data on what each one of my filters are doing, what my tower are doing. It will keep control of all that. They will have the capability of automatic backwashing my filters, which now we do manually, which could be a, a cost savings. So we backwash like every other day. If we're set up to backwash only when those filters need it, they may not backwash that often, which would be some kind of a savings down the line, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't know how much or how substantial that would be, but would make things run um, a lot more efficient. So um, I know there's quite a bit of difference in the money. I don't know um, how else I can explain what, <laughs> what, what you guys want to know, but if you have any questions, why well, I'll try to answer them, so. I was hoping you would have all the answers, Scott, and the win over my head. Um, but, but what answer this for me, when looking at the JetCo's piece, they got the 49.98, and, and Randy, is this time to talk about this, or is it more? Well, I think just on the price issue, I just think, you know, we just want to be careful if we decide we wanted to go back and ask them, does this include computer monitor? No, we want to add a computer and stuff. We don't want them to really know what the other prices are. I think what we're talking about um, is like, do we need to have JetCo? come in and say, okay, we want this through a laptop with the software, the whole works, all intertwined, which they have not bid it. The way it looks to me, they have not, because it says nothing about a laptop and internet service and all that kind of stuff in Jetco's bid, but there is in Lakeland. Do we need to, I'm sure that's going to up their price, but I don't know how much. That's what we're kind of, Randy and I have kind of talked about, if that way is what you think we ought to do, or now, also, you know, Jet goes out of Altoona, um, Lakeland Engineering's in Omaha. Their their service would probably be quicker. I know Jetco has 24-hour service. I mean, they'll send a rep out or a service person out if they have a problem, you know, right away. And so with Lakeland, they're closer, but, and, you know, Lakeland, we've dealt with them on several other things, but there is a little bit of difference here in the price, so. I think what Randy and I have talked about, too, is you know, this may be the time to go ahead and spend the extra money to be computerized because we may think five, six years down the line we need to do this. Probably going to cost more than that difference to do it then. Um, plus, we've talked for the last year or so about having internet service to the water treatment plant for my use as far as information. And now I bring my reports up here and, and do them in Maryland. Um, emails them for me because, you know, DNR is pretty much requiring not that they like us to do all of our, our reports electronically now and a lot of places are doing that, so it's all going to that. So we've been talking about that, so we're kind of killing two birds with one stone on that too. We'd be, all I'd have to do is get a printer for the laptop and I'd be set to go, you know, and have internet service. And this doesn't do that? This gives you the same thing you have now? Uh, jet codes, yes. The way I'm understanding it, yes. Not, not internet, and not, not, a, not all that information tied into a laptop. It, basically, I'm going to have what I have now, only updated controls, which is what we really started out with until I got Lakeland Engineering, and they're saying, well, while we're doing this, we should, you know, and it'd be Missouri Valley. I know I haven't been down there. I've been told I could go down and, and tour their new water treatment plant, but I know it's all, it's all computerized, and they say it's, it's really, really nice. So. For the difference in the money, now might be the time to do that, but that's what we need to, that's what you guys need to determine whether, or do you think we need to have Jetco take a look at it and see if they want to bid? Likewise. Likewise. I mean, it's going to delay the process a little bit. What is the option? Um, on Jetco's? Yeah. That is those level sensors. <coughs> there's six level sensors, one above, well, there's eight, I guess. There's one above each filter. And one in the clear well, one in the detention tank, tells you what the level of the water is in each one, and that's that's what controls it. You know, and and, it's just, and and the option was there. We don't really have to replace those. They will work with. Um, actually, Lakeland is not replacing those. They'll work with what we're doing now. Jetco put it in there as an option, saying while we're doing it, if you want to replace them, but it's like. You know, eleven thousand dollars, and they don't have to be replaced. That's why they put it as an option. So, but but also Lakeland is not replacing those either. So that's not the difference in the bid. So. Any other questions?
Is everything else between Jayco and Lakeland pretty much the same? Except yeah, it's going to be, a, the, you know, PLCs and we'll be running all the features and, you know, a touch screen on the panels on each builder and on the main control panel. That's, that's all the same. It's just that Lakeland is going to put it all in to, to a laptop computer and their bit includes a computer and the software and, all, and the technology and all that. That's the difference in the bid as far as I can see. <laughs> and that's what Bud told me when I, he was up here working on something for me the other day. And he said that was, that we would probably, he said, he told me we will probably be higher because of this technology that we're going to put into it. So, so I guess the question is, do you want to go ahead and go with Lakeland? <coughs> or do you want to go with Jetco? Or do you want to have Jetco rebid? Mm -hmm. But yeah, when it came off for a bid, I haven't talked to them because I wanted to get this in front of you guys first and get your feelings because, I mean, this isn't something that has to be done tomorrow, you know, I mean. Uh, another thing I know, and I haven't talked to Jetco about this, but Lakeland and Bud's telling me they're going to do this like in a four, five, six month period. <coughs> they will come in and maybe rehab two of my filters and then get us used to running them. And then when we're comfortable with it, they'll come in and do the rest. Which the filters aren't a big deal. About the only let downtime I would probably have is when they do the main control panel, and the, which would be done in a one-day period. They'll have everything made up, come in, shut down, slap it in. And jet cool also. I mean, I won't have downtime with them. But I haven't talked to them about are we going to do this like in one week, and then <laughs> you know, here's a procedure on how you run it, and we got to figure it out. I mean, I know they'll show you a startup, but when your computer computer illiterate like I am, this could take a little time for me to learn. So. And that was a, a feature that I liked. They told me they were going to do it in slow steps. So this is also something that we may be able to, Meryl and I have talked about, paying what we had in the budget this year, the rest out of next year's budget, because it's probably not going to be done before the 1st of July, probably with either companies. So that's an option, too. So, so what's your recommendation? Well, I would like to go with Lakeland. I'm really used to working with those guys, and Bud is... Excellent. And like I said, I can call him on the phone right now and say, you remember when this did this last time, bud? What do we have to do to fix it? He can walk me through it. A lot of times I can fix it myself. You know, and if I can, then he comes. But but he's good to work with or a good company. Not that Jetco isn't. I just don't have any experience with him. And I'm sure they would do fine, but that would be my preference. But I was hoping that the money wasn't quite that far apart. But, but it's what, not apples to apples. Yeah, that's what that, because it's really hard, that's why I told Randy, it's not like the pickup when I just called and said, here's what I want, give us a bid, you're all bidding the same thing. This is a little bit different when I said, come in, and I want to update, because I couldn't tell them what I wanted to do, because I didn't know, you know, I don't know what we need for, so that's why it's not quite apples to apples. I don't even know whether Jetco, I'm sure they have to, would do the technology to do it, you know, do the internet on a computer, I'm sure they could do that, so. Those features on the computer, on the little alarms, and we've talked about that, the, the laptop, and the accessibility to, if there's a, to troubleshoot something, or there's a system shutdown, or breakdown, or yeah. failure, okay, will, will those things, are those significantly better under the technology yeah. side? Yeah, the, the PLCs, like, are all the same. They will have that information in them, but say I had a problem with something, or we needed that data, they would probably have, the tech would probably have to come, hook up to that PLC to read what it's been doing. With Lakeland's, the way they're doing it, that information will be in the computer. You know, it'll tell me when my filter back was, you know, how long it took for the run before it needed to. Then I can make adjustments, say, okay, I got more water going through this filter than I do this filter, this was back washed more. I can adjust that to make them all flow even things like that, that information is there. So the PLC will have that, but they will have to come in, probably hook a computer up to it to read that information. So you're going to have it all right there. Basically, you know, that'll be on the desk down here on that computer, what that whole plan's doing. And you can go look at all that information. Can you uh, control the plant remotely then as well? Um, I, don't, I don't think so from the computer like if I had it at home, but that's not a big deal. The main thing is it'd be nice to just be able to pull that up and make right. sure everything's running the way it's supposed to because, you know, if we have, right now during stormy season, if, if the power blinks off at my place, I go to the water plant because I don't know whether the power went out, 
I don't know if I got a problem there because the power outages will goof me up pretty good. So that could save me, you know, having to run down there at two o'clock in the morning to, to uh, see if we got a problem. Also, we could go with a smartphone. Wouldn't have to take the laptop home. You know, you had a smartphone, you could bring that up on that on the internet that way too. So that, that would be an option also eventually to do. Well, probably not being able to control it remotely is probably a good thing. Because then you have to worry about info security. Right. You have to worry right. about Dennis getting on his computer. Right. <laughs> yeah, hacking yeah. into it yeah. and, and shutting our yeah, operation that's, down. That's, that's not a big option. <laughs> that's not a big option of being able to make changes. Because once it's running, I don't make changes to speak of. You know, I don't need to unless I have a problem. You know, it pretty much runs itself. You know, it's all automated to run itself. So I don't need to make changes. I need to set my kitchen table and change this and change that. You know. That, that's not a that's not a big deal, but being able to see what that plant's doing at any time. If I'm on vacation, <laughs> you know, if I if I had a smartphone on vacation, and the guys call me and say, "Hey, dude, we got this going on," you know, and I can say, "Well, let, let me look and see what's going on here," you know, because I might be able to walk, I could walk them through something, you know. And that that would be the greatest feature we've talked about before, possibly putting a a camera, you know. And I've talked to Bill about it before, and you know showing onto my panel so I could bring it up at home on my home computer and just to see them because I can see those numbers I know what's going on and watch those numbers every day you know so so that would be a, a greatest the best part about the computer and it's not a matter a matter of if it's we have to do this um, yeah the controls need to be changed because all those control boards we can't replace them. we can't but they're they're outdated so so I guess we're going to update. I guess my my thing is we just will go the full distance. Like Randy and I were talking, you know, there's no use doing it one way and then five years from now saying, well, we we need to have this hooked up to the computer so we know what's going on and probably going to cost more than that difference than to upgrade again. That's the way. That's kind of the way I look at it. But and as far as the budget, the dollars, Randy. We uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we had 40 in there for this year. We put 20 in for next year. So for one thing with this, if it's going to drag out a little bit, that's not going to be a problem. So we're going to overlap. So, so we've got plenty of money in the budget for, for either bid. So. I believe when we, when we, I got the bid was like over about a year and a half ago. We just got one for budget purposes. That's really hard to do, you know. So that's how much it's changed in a year and a half. And that was from basically from Jetco. It was a different company, but through Iowa Pump that gave me the preliminary bid just for budget purposes and it was you know right at you know in the 40 range and it's gone up substantially so. <coughs> so as it stands right now eyes only we were the only ones that got this information on these bid, bid numbers correct so if we want to ask Jetco since we have the time to come in then we could get a, a light bid from them to compare what we have Yes, and I would, all that would probably be a Scott, they probably wouldn't have to come back, Scott, to just tell them that we want to go everything online, put stuff with the computer, with, you know, what we need to reload in, and uh, they could, I'm sure, just change Yeah, I don't think they have to come back over, they could just remit it from uh, that, that. That's kind of what I think we should do. I'm going to say, unless you need to let Lakeland know, but if, if we haven't made any of these bids public, then. Right. And I, and I agree, I, that's, we've talked about that, and. Okay. I was thinking that might be the fair way to do it. You know, we want to make sure we're, we're fair with this. You know. Yeah, it does say valid for 60 days, so we have a yeah. little time here. Yeah, and the jet goes was, I think, only valid 30, but but I've talked to him a couple of times, so I'm sure that will be, and if we haven't rebid it, it's not valid. Right. But you can call him tomorrow. Yeah, I could call right. Whitaker in the morning, and, and I've talked to him a couple of times already. He's called me a couple of times to see. I said, well, we're waiting for another bid. You know, okay, I understand that. So it's not, that 30 day deal is not a problem. And, it's going to be different anyway, so it'll be basically a new bid. And I would just say I agree with you, Scott. Being around a while in the city government, Bud, I do know Bud, who Bud is, that company, we've dealt with them for 30 years. They know our plan inside and out. There's some value in, in doing business with that company. Secondly, you know, that how, how they both thought about this, you know, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm for going back to Jetco and getting a, an updated bid, but, uh, you know, they kind of said, here's probably what you need. Yeah. Lakeland said, no, here's really what you need to yeah. update yeah. it. To here's what, they said, here's what you need, but here's what we can do to really make this right. the way it should be. And right. 
Right. Like I said, it's real hard to get apples to apples now. I can get closer with it now, tell them, Jetco, here's what I want you to add to your, to your bid. Right. So, I'll do, I'll call them in the morning. I'm sure they can have something back to buy in the next council meeting. And I will discuss this with Bud and tell him what we're doing, and then he'll be fine with that. So. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions that they want Scott to ask? Why is Kevin call or anything? Or I say basically, I'm pouring to what's going on down there, so that's why I had Scott try to explain it. So, yeah. so they can ask any questions we need to right now. Agenda item number seven, uh, number six will hold off to it, not being a bid. Uh, agenda item number seven is a point landfill representative. Um, currently, that is me. Um, but we'll need someone else to take my spot to go out and uh, for the city's interest. So when was that again? Those are the second Wednesday of each month. And they hold true to that. They, as far as I know, they've never had a special meeting or anything. Oh, it's been. Think. Second Wednesday. Do we still have the option of not having somebody on the council but appointing somebody from the community? Yes, we do. So you wouldn't consider staying on it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it has to be somebody on the council. <laughs> There's an option there. Right? <laughs> As you notice, I have this added to the agenda for a reason. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, we could rotate worst case scenario and pass the pain around. Um, uh, Wednesday night is bad, you know, bad for me generally, and I, you know, council members in the city, I know that's a popular night for activities and stuff, and that's probably always going to be difficult, and we appreciate you taking that for so long, but uh, I, I'd be glad to take my share if it came to that. Um, When's the next meeting? The next meeting is not until you know, the second meeting of next month. So um, there will be another council meeting before then that somebody could be appointed. So we're just oh, going to think about think it. Think about it. That yeah, that's stage. fine. That's why I wanted to bring it up now. In the next couple weeks. So. <laughs> Maybe a citizen would like to do it. Yeah. If you've got anybody, just let me know. <laughs> Yeah, we had uh, Ron Holby yeah, how long for, was ever since the inception of the Landfill Commission. So 15 years, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, then we uh, was kind of decided a couple years ago it should be somebody on the council since we're spending so much money out there uh, you know, to look after the city's interest. And Ron always did. I mean, Ron went through everything. I mean, he looked at all the members. He made sure, he, I mean, he was always asking questions. He made sure that that uh, they were doing things right. Um, and he still goes to the meetings. For the last year and a half, he's not on the commission anymore, but he's still been at every meeting. So, <laughs> except for, I think, one when he was uh, in the hospital having something done. So. Let's put it on the agenda. Agenda item number eight. Uh, let's dis discuss the city audit. Had received that. Uh, most everything this year is pretty much uh, follows in with uh, past years. Um, one of their findings is naturally, uh, I'm just actually skipping straight to page 41, and we'll go back forward if, if uh, anybody has any questions on any of the numbers or whatever. Um, first thing is segregation of duties. Um, you know, it's, that's been on there, as Mike knows, ever since the beginning of time. Uh, but when you've got a one or two person, you know, two person uh, office, you really have problems segregating duties. So um, we're basically the, the, the check to make sure that uh, we verify the bank balances and stuff like that that uh, are supplied to us each month. Um, uh, the next page, um, the council minutes. Um, 
They didn't find anything that had not been approved that we did outside of not being approved. Uh, they did state that there was one in closed session. Um, the minutes didn't record the specific chapter code, uh, but I believe that uh, we let them know what that was and they uh, agreed to that that was fine. Um, there was also one uh, that we did not have uh, published within the 15 days as required by law and uh, also that one did not have include a summary of disbursements. So uh, I'm not sure, usually that was just an overlook on the disbursements part because that's always been in there that I've recognized. Uh, um, they also mentioned that in addition the council passed a resolution, a resolution to approve a pool percent increase in wages but not specific increases. Uh, so basically this year instead of when we do the resolution for wages we'll have to spell out each person's uh, wage kind of like we did with uh, the pool board. Uh, we have an addendum that showed everybody's wage, not just uh, what the overall total would be. Uh, deposits and investments, uh, no instances of non-compliance um, with the investments. Um, they say that we do not have listed uh, maximum authorized amounts for each depository used. At uh, one time we did have that on file, so I'm not sure why, what that, why I'm going to carry it over, so I'll have to check into that. Um, we'll just have to make sure we do that. So, uh, Revenue notes, uh, no, no instances of non-compliance there. Uh, financial condition, uh, they just said that to the end of June, uh, the debt service fund had a deficit balance of $9,000. Um, our response was the deficit will be eliminated by transfer, and that was fine, and that's what we always do every year. Uh, we transfer that out eventually. So. Um, disbursements, um, they would like us to have the uh, front and back images of checks, and uh, the bank does not do back images right now down here, so uh, if they ever do, we will, but at uh, this time they don't. So. Um, excess balance, uh, the balance in the uh, local option sales tax was uh, in excess of the fund distribute disbursements, uh, but that was money that um, we'll be spending that was earmarked for this year for some roads and stuff like that, so uh, that's why that was not spent all the way down. Um, the next one was sale of real property. Um, this was one where we held the public hearing uh, to sell a lot for $1,000, and uh, we've never been paid for that, so we will need to either uh, collect on that or we're going to have to um, I don't know, we'll have to ask council what we'd have to do as far as uh, how we'd go about rescinding that offer uh, to sell that land. So, was there an expiration? I don't believe there was, but according to what they've got here, they must usually expect that once you have the public hearing that, that you would have it. So, yeah, so. And you probably wouldn't. You probably wouldn't want to go into a new fiscal year. I mean, we're closing up the book for this year, so we need to get that, that property taken care of. Well, this was actually last year, so, yeah. so this would have been what ended last year, uh, June 30th of last year, so we've already... Uh, well, two years we should get it taken care of. <laughs> Budget years. <laughs> and so those were the findings of, of the audit. So um, I said all but uh, about two items were the same as what they usually have listed every year, and some of those are out of our control just due to our size. Um, you know, we can't hire four or five people to be in the office and, uh, and manage the city affairs. Um, as far as anything else, does anybody have any questions on anything else further up in the budget? Um, this is available for anybody that wants to look at it. We have copies here on file, and uh, you know, it's, it's public records, so anybody wants to see it can definitely take a look at it. So. Anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. Questions. We'll go on to agenda item number nine. <coughs> uh, agenda item number nine is hire Bill McKinn of McGinn Law Firm to represent to Logan in the case of uh, Logan versus Johnson. And uh, Mike had spoke to, to uh, Mr. McGinn and I did also, and uh, he is willing to take this. And we're just
is hiring him for this particular case? This is for this case only? Yes, correct. I make a motion to hire Bill McGinn of McGinn Law Firm to represent Logan in the case of Logan versus Johnson. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Are there any questions or discussion? Councilmember Fever. Aye. Clark. Aye. Johnson. Stay. Fouch. Aye. And Crum. Aye. Agenda item number nine is approved. Uh, agenda item number ten: uh, citizens' questions and comments.